So I'll start. Before we start, I just want to ask any questions. Before we start. Um. Okay. Um. Today we'll continue to prove um the convergence and uh, um uh, our iterative method. Uh, but before that, um, I want to address uh, several questions. Um, people ask me on uh, Piazza. Um, the first one, the first one is notation of norms. Um, the first question is asked. So let me try to address Q1. Um, if I have a matrix A and uh, um, and a vector x, and I take the norms, um, are they the same thing? Um, the answer is they actually um, they are and they are not, um, because by definition, by definition. By definition, um, so uh, if uh, uh, for those of you who, who who came a little bit late, um, I play music soundtrack because I want to cover my HVAC system song. Um, by definition. And what I want to emphasize is what I want to emphasize is is if we have a two right here, all right? If we have a two right here, we need to have. Two and two right here as well. All right. Um, it is defined um, in the way uh, that they are consistent. Um, the second question. The second question asks, "What is uh, SUP means?" Um, what his SUP means is what? Um, SUP is just a, um, it's called a soup. Um, the answer is SUP is called supremum of something. Okay. Um, for example, uh, if we have a vector, okay. If we have a vector. And I take the soup of the absolute value um, of this xi absolute value. It's actually the same as I take in the maximum between n and them. Okay. This is the uh, supreme means. Um, in our case, in our case. Um, like uh, it is just the mass. So the answer is, in our class, we treat the supremum as uh, maximum. Okay. So now let's uh, let's begin. Um, and our ultimate goal is to investigate investigate. Um, the Jacobi iterative methods defined by uh, defined by x k plus one's iterate 
is the diagonal inverse L plus U X kth iterate and diagonal inverse times B. Um. When X of K uh, converges to X star where X star solves AX equals B as well as is the fixed point of our like a uh, fixed point iteration. All right. Uh, this is our goal. Um, we're curious. This is this is uh, our iterative method. Um, it's defined for k equals zero dot 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 and zero one two, and we can let uh, uh, this iteration run as many iterations as we like. Um, and we want to show using the ideas and uh, theorems we learned last time to show like when does this converge and on Friday we'll test like how does the matrix structure or how does a matrix um, say uh, the value of a matrix in this matrix affect how fast um, this is converging, all right? Um, and now, before we do that, uh, let's do a few preparation. First one is we learned the spectral radius last time. Let's review. We review uh, AX equals lambda X for X is not zero vector, then uh, this is called eigenvalue, and x is called eigenvector. All right, and the spectral radius of A, the spectral radius of A is defined as the maximum of i from 1 to n, uh, the eigenvalue of a, if uh, a is non-singular, it means a, a inverse exists. Okay. Then we have the following theorem. We are one step closer to prove our result. And that is uh, um, these two are equivalent. That is, the spectral radius of A is less than one is equivalent to say the limit as k goes to infinity, a to the kth power uh, acting or multiplied with any vector is the zero vector for any x vector. And it's also the same thing as the limit of k goes to infinity. The norm of uh, this matrix is zero. These three things, this one, this one, and this one, they are equivalent, all right? They are equivalent. And uh, um, for example, for example, let me give a quick example here. First, we notice that this matrix, this matrix is a lower triangular matrix. Um, this entry is zero. And we also notice that all the entries are less than one. Okay, so for example, we have one half, and this one is strictly less than, this one is strictly less than the diagonal entry. If we compute 
uh, a square, which is a times a, we'll get uh, the following. So I'll write down the answer. And the diagonal just becomes smaller and smaller. We have the following formula. As we can see, we can use calculus to verify um, these two apparently uh, converges to zero. And this one we can use L'Hopital rule um, to verify that it converges to zero as well. All right, this is, this is, a, this is a nice matrix. Um, if we can build our iterative matrix in this way, um, I mean, we're in business. Um, and let's review, let's recap a bit. Let's review what we have for, uh, for Jacobi iteration. Uh, in general, we have the k plus one c iterate is our iterative matrix T times uh, the kth iterate plus the c vector. Uh, k is zero, one, etc. Um, we've shown iteratively that how does this go. For example, um, this is shown in last week uh, in, I think, in lecture, this is lecture eight, then in lecture six, I think. In lecture six video, um, you can check on uh, Zoom that this one is the same thing as we plug in the iterates again. We'll get this is k minus one plus c plus c vector. And we do this recursively like um, n time, k times. And what we'll have here is going to be um, t to the k plus one power x zero plus t to the kth power plus t to the um, k minus one power up until t plus identity matrix times the c. And what we hope is this one converges to zero vector as k goes to infinity, and this one converges to i minus t inverse matrix when k goes to infinity. This is what we hoped. And today, um, we have enough technical tools to show that this is good when certain conditions are imposed on t. All right. And Let's, uh, let me scroll back a little bit. We first we wanna use this theorem. Apparently we can impose the condition of the spectral radius of T is less than one. Because if spectral radius of T is less than one, we use this theorem, we can see that T when raised to the kth power and k goes to infinity, multiply with any vector will get zero, which means, which means this term will should be gone if we assume the spectral radius uh, of t is less than one. And so this one is, can be taken care of if we assume rho of t is less than one. Now, the only question remains is if we assume rho of t is less than one, k 
can this condition be verified? All right. How about you assume rho of t, which is the spectral radius of t is less than one. Or say the maximum eigenvalue of t is less than one. Is this happening? And this is the big theorem we want to prove today. All right. The answer is yes. If rho of t is less than one, and rho of t is the spectral radius, um, spectral radius. Or say the maximum eigenvalue, the maximum absolute value of the eigenvalue of t is less than one, then what happens is, first, we have this is true. Uh, the inverse of the identity matrix subtract the T exists. All right. And we have the following. The inverse of I minus T is the same as identity matrix plus t plus t square dot 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 which is this infinite sum it's like infinite series but it's matrix matrices j from um actually it's j from zero to infinity uh t to the jth power and when j is zero um t to the zeroth power means identity matrix. So, um, oops. All right. I wanna make this result, uh, like we said earlier in last week, I wanna make this result analogous to one of the calculus results we learned maybe two years ago. It is, it is this result. When X's absolute value is less than one, this one is the same thing as one plus X plus X square dot dot dot. It's the infinite series of X to the kth power. K starts from zero to infinity. If X absolute value is less than one, we find this result is exactly the same. It's almost exactly the same of the matrix result, all right? If we want to memorize the result for matrices, um, we just uh, do, um, The result we just like uh, remind ourselves the result of uh, um, of the series, and now let's do the proof. All right. First, let's consider the following, um, because let's assume let lambda be an eigenvalue. of t what does this say is is that uh, um is t times certain like say a uh, vector x which is an eigenvector is the same as lambda times x 
And what we can do here, what we can do here is uh, we simply we add x, we let x subtract p of x equals x subtract, right? And uh, what happens is, what happens is, uh, let me remind ourselves that identity matrix times any vector, we get the vector itself. And this tells us the left is i minus t times um, the vector x. And this is one minus lambda times vector x. Uh, this is the matrix and uh, this is the number. I mean, it's the same thing as this is a matrix, this is a number, right? Which means this tells us, this tells us one minus lambda is an eigenvalue of I minus T. So, and let's recall um, this assumption, the spectral radius um, of a matrix is less than one. It means for any lambda, because uh, the spectral radius is taking the maximum lambda absolute value. If we only consider lambda, now because lambda is sure less than or equal to the spectral radius of t, and this is we know that it's strictly less than one. And what this tells us, which means it's lambda is strictly less than one, and this tells us one minus lambda is strictly greater than one. It means, it means what? It means every single eigenvalue of I minus T is greater than zero. Keep in mind this lambda is, is any eigenvalue of T, all right? which means any eigenvalue of i minus t, every eigenvalue of i minus t is strictly greater than zero. This tells us one thing. If we know that a matrix um, which has no zero eigenvalue, this matrix is invertible. Let me, let me write down this aside. So let me use notation, this M. M has no zero eigenvalues is the same as M invertible. It means M inverse exists and we can find it. All right. And it is unique, this inverse. If we use if we use this result, if we use this result, apparently I minus T inverse exists. We have shown our first part of this theorem, which is, uh, um, which is uh, what? Which is I minus T inverse exists. And now we want to show the second part of this theorem, which is uh, um, I minus T inverse equal to this sum. Okay. What we want to do is we let the sum, um, like accumulatively, um, is we denote we denote the following. We denote B of M is equal to I plus T plus T square plus till 
to the nth power for m a positive integer, all right? If m is, we just define this b of m as the sum of, uh, of apparently uh, this sum, okay? And what happens is uh, we want to compute, we want to compute, we know, let's review a bit, uh, like the definition of the inverse matrix. Um, definition of inverse matrix says uh, B inverse times B equals B times B inverse is identity matrix, all right? Taking the, if taking the inverse is hard, if taking the inverse is hard, um, what we want to do is we verify their product is identity. Okay, let me repeat this again. If we want to prove some matrix is another matrix inverse, we, we don't compute the inverse directly. Instead, we verify their product is identity, okay? And what we want to do here is we want to verify, we want to verify uh, B infinity. B infinity just means we, we let uh, this M, we let this M go to infinity, all right? We want to verify B infinity times I minus T is equal to I minus T times B infinity is identity matrix. This is we, what we want to verify instead of a directly computing an inverse, all right? And this is a, a, a typical question, or say the typical uh, technical tool uh, at our disposal to prove uh, the inverse. And now let's do it. Let's first, let's first compute what is uh, uh, I minus T times B sub M, right? It is uh, I minus T times I plus T plus T square dot 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 plus T to the uh, nth power, okay? Let me move this above a bit. And what happens, what happens is, what happens is, uh, um, we just use, we just treat this matrix multiplication like polynomial multiplication. Uh, we let I multiply with this first, and then we minus T multiply this second, okay? So it is I times identity matrix plus T, plus T square dot dot dot, t to the nth power minus t times i plus t plus t square add to t to the nth power. All right. And now we just, this is exactly like polynomial uh, multiplication. We have this is i plus t plus T square, because uh, identity matrix multiply with any matrix is just the matrix itself. And which means we have our matrix by themselves. All right. And now this is subtraction of T minus identity matrix. T minus identity matrix, I'm sorry. T multiply with identity matrix is just T itself. And plus T square plus T cube until T multiply with uh, T to the nth power, which is uh, T raised to the M plus one power. Now, if we observe this difference more carefully, we find that 
we have a plus t here. If we have a plus t here, um, we have a minus t here. If we have a t square here, we have a minus t square here. And same for like t cube. The only difference is the only thing in the subtraction term, aside from t to the mth power, which we have a t to the mth power here, we have an extra t to the m plus one power, which makes this, this is i minus t raised to the m plus one power. All right. And, uh, um, And now we let uh, m go to infinity, all right? And then we let m go to infinity. Now because um, m goes to infinity, um, t to the m plus one power acting on any vector will get zero vector. This actually implies, this is because uh, rho of t is less than one. This actually implies every entry of um, t plus m, and let me, let me use this notation, it's ij the entry goes to zero as, I'm sorry, as, uh, as m goes to infinity. So this is, uh, this is somewhat a leap of faith, but uh, it's not too bad because we can always make, uh, keep this in mind, this is for any x. For example, we can let x to be a specific vector um, to show that uh, um, this guy is zero. For example, um, we can let x in a certain position to be one and all other position to be zero and we can extract certain sum. Um, for example, if we let x to be one in position, and zero in other, we can extract that column, okay? And uh, so, which means every, every column um, of that entry is zero. And correspondingly, uh, we can show uh, this is true, all right? And now let's uh, take a step back. Let's take a look at what's happening here. It is, these two matrix multiplied, we get this. And let's copy that result down. It is I minus B sub M times, oops, sorry. It should be I minus T, right? It should be I minus T times B sub M is I minus T to the M plus one power. And now we let M go to infinity. And this is, this is identity matrix I. And, uh, um, and if we let uh, um, the left side um, go to infinity, this is nothing but uh, I minus T times B infinity. And B infinity is this infinite sum is i plus t plus t square dot 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 t to the kth power dot 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 this infinite sum. And similarly, similarly we can show, and this we have shown, this implies, this implies uh, um, this just implies uh, i minus t inverse is uh, is this infinite sum of, uh, of matrices. All right. 
And this is our big theorem today. Um, before we move on, I just want to um, say any questions. You can you can like a uh, private message me if you don't like to uh, enter like publicly in the chat. Like any comment, any you know, like questions. Um, Okay, um, if no questions, I'll, mo I'll move on. Um, the, second, the second theorem, or say uh, corollary you want to prove, is uh, um, this is a corollary. The corollary we want to prove is we have a estimate on matrix norm. That is uh, I minus T inverse matrix norm is less than or equal to one over one minus T's norm. And before we show the proof of this corollary, uh, we need to have the following thing. That is, uh, let me put the theorem we need to use on the side. The theorem is called uh, um, some certain, its official name is called Cauchy Schwarz inequality, but this is like anywhere in our like uh, life of uh, dealing with matrices with norms. That is, a times a vector x to norm is less than or equal to a to norm times x to norm. We have actually shown we have actually shown this in Monday's lecture um, during the proof of our previous big theorem, which is. Uh, uh, we we um, we prove that the two norm of a non-singular matrix is the same as its uh, spectral radius. All right. The other, which I'll skip, um, the proof today is if we have uh, two matrices multiplied together, and this multiplication is less than their norms multiplication. And we'll use the second part of the theorem to show uh, this corollary. Um, the proof is also a kind of a template-ish uh, to prove some uh, matrix identity or say matrix inequality is we rewrite I, which is the identity matrix, as I minus T plus T. And this, this is a standard trick. This is a standard trick to prove uh, matrix identities. Now we multiply I minus T in both, um, in both on both sides. We have this is I minus T times I minus T inverse plus T times I minus T inverse. All right. And Now we can see this is nothing but identity matrix. And we establish the fact that I minus T inverse is identity plus T times I minus T inverse. Oh, my bad. I, I need to add one more inequality here. Um, 
there is one more inequality we have here is a plus b uh, two norm is less than a two norm plus uh, b two norm think this as triangle inequality we have if we have two numbers if we have two numbers a plus b it's less than or equal to absolute value of a plus absolute value now we simply take we make use of uh, this inequality and this inequality right here we take we take the norm on both sides. We have, this is uh, I minus T inverse two norm. It's the same thing as I plus T, I minus T to the inverse norm. We apply this first, triangle inequality first. We have this is less than or equal to i plus t times i minus t inverse 2. And we use this inequality again. What we have is, first of all, the norm of the identity matrix. The norm of identity matrix is always one. No matter you use infinity norm or two norm, it's always one. <laughs> this is one plus if we use uh, our this inequality right here, okay? And we can get this. And now we simply, we move this term to the left. Uh, what we have here is gonna be one minus T to the two norm times this inverse is two norm is less than or equal to one. And the last step is nothing but we divide, we divide uh, this term to the right. And the reason we can divide that is because the spectral radius, the spectral radius of uh, of uh, uh, T's two norm. And by the way, this is uh, know that T two norm equals the spectral radius of T, and this makes one minus T two not zero all right so if we apply it we can divide this to the right side and then we're done and we have shown this uh, corollary this is actually a rate of the estimate of how fast um, the jacobi will converge and lastly um in like uh, the last topic of today's class which I'll just give you the theorem, the convergence of Jacobi. Oops. It says a follow. If A is strictly diagonally dominant, And by strictly diagonally dominant, what I mean is the absolute value of AII, and this is a diagonal entry. Diagonal entry is strictly greater than the sum of the rest entries in that row. And this is AIJ. So I denotes rows, J denotes columns. We sum up all the entries in the i row, but in different columns with I. And this is a strictly greater than, right? And these are the non-diagonal entry 
non-diagonal entries in I throw. If if this is true, then Jacoby, then Jacoby iteration converges to the solution to AX equals B. And this is our convergence of uh, Jacoby method. Um, so that's it for today. On Friday, we, we have proved this theorem, right? And on Friday, uh, we'll resume our remote coding lecture, uh, which, will sh uh, which will show numerically, like how does um, this theorem affect the convergence and how, what if we make, what if we make this less than or equal? What happens if we make that, all right?